Just to start from some basics here, can you give me a show of hands? How many of you voters are going to cast your ballots for Donald Trump? Okay. Uh, Mary, you raised your hand. You are in the very important state of Arizona. Uh, what's driving your decision? Well, my, my decision is I live right on the border in Yuma, Arizona, and I know in the last three and a half years, we have had just a horrible, horrible problems in Yuma with um, a lot of illegal immigration coming through. Our hospital, the one hospital we have, has almost had to shut down several times because we've had no money coming in. And uh, the hospital is just, um, it's just on the brink of foreclosure. Um, it's just been really terrible. Our economy is awful. Yuma's unemployment is 16%. So the economy is a big factor as well. Uh, just a combination of things. Our groceries have gone up. Um, like I said, the employment, the illegal immigration, just, just everything has just really gone downhill in the last three and a half years for us in Yuma and Arizona completely. So that's one thing. Um, I've also uh, been to a Trump rally. I've been there. Um, I see how much he cares for people. And I do believe that he can bring the economy back. I believe that he can bring things back to the way it was four years ago. So Mary, um, we're in this unique position where Donald Trump had been president before um, and is running again. So you did experience his policies. Are you happy with how he handled the global pandemic and, and COVID with shutting down the economy? I think, I think it was a unique situation that we had never faced before. Um, I think he did the best that he could with with some of the advice that he got from Dr. Fauci and from the CDC. I mean, he's not an expert in pandemics and he's not a healthcare professional. Um, I think he did the best that he could and he tried tried to, to do the best that he could with what he was given. Um, so he did get the vaccine, so-called vaccine, uh, push through as quickly as possible. And I think, you know, I don't think anybody could have done any better at that at that point in time because it was something that was unique. And um, now hindsight, you know, if, you know, four years later, uh, I think there's a lot of things that we would have done differently. I think anyone would have done differently. But at that point in time, I think with what we knew at that point and with that unique initial strain of COVID, mm -hmm. I think he did the best he could. Cole, you are in uh, Georgia, also a very key state. Why do you plan to vote for Donald Trump? Yeah, thank you. Um, I think my issue, I, I look at um, my voting as not voting on a single issue, but a variety of issues. Um, and I also, for me, I do not look necessarily at the candidate specifically, but just the broader party and the direction they're hoping to take America. Um, for me, uh, some of the top three issues would definitely be our economy, um, immigration, and then um, I would also say, um, as we've come out of the pandemic, just seeing how the two different political parties handled the pan pandemic. Um, personally, in Georgia, I felt like our governor, Brian Kemp, did an amazing job handling that. Um, I look at other states like California and Michigan that kept their schools closed for years longer than we did. Um, and our youth did not see any significant health detriments. Um, compared to those other two states, and uh, our students have been able to come out of that more successfully. Um, I think Kamala Harris and the Democrats are a little bit too extreme on the issue of abortion. Um, I do not support 
um, the idea of allowing abortion at uh, 20 weeks of pregnancy and certainly not um, with no restrictions. Um, and so I would prefer candidates who are more aligned with my pro-life position. Um, that That's interesting and specific there, Cole. Uh, you said you don't, you're not comfortable with candidates who would allow abortion at, at 20 weeks of pregnancy, which is sort of right just short of where viability is these days. Um, does that mean you like or you dislike former President Trump's position now where he says he's just going to send it back to the states and doesn't want to have a national policy? He, he's sort of changed things a number of times over the years in terms of what he personally believes. Does that trouble you? Um, I think that's very valid. I know prior to becoming a politician, he was a little bit more pro-choice. Um, when he started running for president the first time in 2016, he became more aligned with the pro-life movement. Um, listen, I, I think I, I agree with um, most Americans. We want exceptions for abortions on the issues of rape, health of the mother, fatal, fe uh, fatal fetal abnormality, excuse me. Um, but I definitely would prefer candidates who are more pro-life. Um, I believe that um, allowing abortion for an elective reason at 20 weeks is um, really just immoral and unethical. Um, I know there are many studies that show that uh, fetuses can feel pain at that stage. Um, with each uh, passing year, our technology gets better and babies can be delivered early. Um, so I would prefer more abortion restrictions. Um, recently in Georgia, we had our um, uh, fetal heartbeat bill overturned, and that has been disappointing uh, for me. I'm not sure if I land right on the six-week mark, but um, 20 weeks to me um, is, is quite a long time to go um, when you should have been able to make that decision earlier on. So um, either, either candidate, uh, Donald Trump or Kamala Harris, I don't think they're going to be able to touch the abortion issue. They're never going to have the votes in the Senate at 60. Um, so I think... Um, at the end of the day, um, neither of them are going to be able to touch it too much. So I would prefer uh, someone like Donald Trump who allows the states to have more influence over that decision. So the lack of moral clarity in the position doesn't trouble you, even though for you it's a moral issue. Um, again, I, I, I realize that he's not a perfect candidate for me on that issue, um, but he it. certainly aligns more with me than Kamala Harris does. I, I think she wants to reinstate um, from what she said, uh, Roe v. Wade, which was a very ambiguous judicial decision, which was later expanded upon by the Planned, Planned Parenthood versus Casey ruling. Um, I realized that maybe not everyone understands the nuances that go into that. Um, but originally, Roe v. Wade did not provide for restrictions on abortion. Um, and so I, I just I believe that is far too loose of a system to allow in this nation. Mike, you're in Nevada. You said you will be voting for Donald Trump, but he makes it hard. <laughs> he makes it hard for you to feel good about that vote. Can you explain what you mean? You know, uh, there's parts of Donald Trump which I admire and parts of Donald Trump which I, I, I cringe, for lack of a better term. And, you know, in, in the debate when he said, you know, they just asked him, January 6th, would you change anything? Um, I think he had an opportunity there to step up as a leader and and take some ownership. People went to jail. Um, people in his cabinet went to jail. I mean, it's like you, as a leader, I think you have to own those things and, you, and and move on. I think you know. I think that would have showed a lot of of courage for him to do that. So I like some things on on the economy, uh, t tightening up uh, inflation. Yes, yes, and yes. You know, I think those are the primary issues in this election. You know, as you get into the periphery and and just how, you know, he conducts himself. Sometimes it's, you know, it's hard to put a Trump side in the front yard, <laughs> based on some of his behaviors. But you're still doing it. Why? Well, because I'm a fan of the economy and a fan of success, right? It's and so. Um, you know, I I live in Nevada, right next door to California. I see what. Uh, those policies have done and decimated the great state of California. So I would just as soon, you know, 
be more pragmatic in how we drive the economy. I think it's been, I think there's been the there has been no driver in the driver's seat in our economy for the last three and a half years, and I think we've suffered mightily for it. I think inflation, as you know, both candidates now are 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 pitching uh, tax, uh, you know, tax reform or tax cuts. I'm a CPA by trade. Um, mm -hmm. You know, half of the unit, people in the United States don't pay tax, you, and they're the the most vulnerable out there. The only thing you can do to help those folks is really um, layer back uh, inflation, you know, layer back interest rates, give people their purchasing power back for their the wages they do earn. And I think when you look at the, you know, the real standard of living for a lot of people, if you're looking today versus three, four years ago, um, they are significantly worse off today, just because their their dollar doesn't go as farther don't go as far, I should say, and interest rates are killing them. So mm -hmm. that's where it's like that. That that drives a lot for me. I don't have to like people personally. I don't have to agree with some of the stuff they do, but I have to, you know, kind of go for the greater good. I do wish he'd make it a little bit easier, though. What are you thinking of when you say that? You know, I think uh, if you can ingratiate yourself to. Um, to the electorate, that's good. I think it's a good sign of leadership. Mm -hmm. and, I'll, and I'll give you an example of that. So when, you know, when they asked him, you know, if he lost the election, you know, you know, I, 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 I thought, here's your chance, you know, President Trump. Here's your chance. All you got to do is say, I, I believe I should have won that election, but I lost all of my legal remedies. So as soon as there were no more legal remedies in a nation of laws, I'm no longer the president and I don't have to mm -hmm. like it. I can do everything I can to change those things that I think were flawed in the system, but I didn't win that election. And I and I think that would have gone light years ahead for his own personal agenda um, because he would have showed that, okay, he can accept things. So I guess that's where I'd fall on that one. Christopher, you are in North Carolina. Um, how are people doing there amidst the fallout from this storm? And, and what makes you uh, an enthusiastic Republican right now? Uh, I've always been an enthusiastic Republican since I voted for Ronald Reagan in 1980. Um, I've been fortunate enough to be part of Trump's ground campaign in 2016. Uh, and I met some very amazing people. Uh, and again, I will uh, accentuate not the Republican Party's uh, ground team, the Trump ground team. So uh, you worked the for the Trump campaign in 2016. I was a volunteer. OK. Uh, Are you I, doing I was, that this year? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, it's there's more health issues involved now than were back eight years ago. But uh, I'm trying to help wherever I can. Um, but I, what I will say is I really, really like the, the maturation process that he's gone through. He got his feet wet in 2016. He, he learned the, the hard way. He got tagged a few times. He stepped in it a lot. That's when you, I, I heard somewhere, one of the famous scientists say, if you fall flat on your face, you're going in the right direction. So you're going forward. But the team he has together right now, you have a Kennedy, J.D. Vance, which you uh, had the opportunity to talk with him a week or so ago. Um, uh, Kelsey, was it Kelsey, Kelsey Govard? Well, I, I can't, get her, can't get her name right, but- Tulsi Gubbard. Just, Gubbard. Tulsi, yeah. yeah, I apologize, don't you. But it, it's, it's a very dynamic and experienced team with, not you know they're not all yes people they provide a different point of perspective that he can draw from it's some things some comments were made before and they were very valid by everybody uh you know we wish he could do this or that but and i remember when we spoke about covid uh, a true leader gathers all the intel he can at that point in time to make the best decision he can by the information that's given to him by his general you know, mm -hmm. hindsight's an exact science. After every business meeting or, or business activity, especially, you know, we all do. You do, and after the show, you have a post-mortem. It's easy to look in the rearview mirror and say, could have, should have, and would have. But when you're in the moment, you make the best decision you can at the time. I trust him to do that. I trust him to make a decision. And he has made a lot of good decisions. The economy. 
You know, I'm paying 150% more for groceries. Uh, gasoline, I was paying a buck 50. Now, you know, I filled it up, it's over $3. Inflation. Mm -hmm. uh, these things are proven track records he has, and he can tackle them. He doesn't have a, a, a long list. I'm looking at the 20 points. Inflation, economy, get people back to work, uh, give corporate tax incentives to, to build in, in the inside America and sell in America. Um, but do you, Christopher, ever feel uh, uncomfortable, like Mike said he did, with things that Donald Trump says? Um, at some times I, I have, but then I, I heard, uh, or somebody made a, a very prophetic statement that first of all, and I had to go back to when he was first being, uh, queried about being president back in the nineties by Oprah and everybody else. And people, I think from your news organization as well, were talking to him about it, but this is Donald Trump. He's a businessman. He's not a politician. He's not a figurehead. He never has mm -hmm. been. He never will be. I'd rather hear. Now, remember, I'm from North Carolina. We had Jesse Helms. He was pretty blunt and to the point, but you never had to guess where the man stood. Mm. And that's one of the things I like about Trump. But in this day and age, with the what we're being faced with, the the on the on the global stage and the not so nice characters that will look for a weak spot in the United States of America to bring her to her knees, I'd rather have in a in the ocean full of uh, bloody water shark, great white sharks. I'd rather have an orca in there than Flipper protecting me. And I know Donald Trump will get in there and he will fight for us. He may not say what we want to hear, but he will execute on our behalf. And it's obvious the man nearly, nearly died. He took a bullet mm -hmm. for us. He got back up again. And mm -hmm. you cannot dismiss that. And the, his instinct was to say, fight. So that right there tells me this man doesn't, he doesn't have to be there. Yeah. He's. He's doing what he's doing for us. And that's why, I'm, I mean, I like his policies. I like who he's surrounded himself with that, mm -hmm. that have all these divergent points of view. And that tells me he's in it to win for us. Okay. Uh, show of hands it, on this question too. Um, how many of you would be comfortable with the first female president and female commander in chief? Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Mary, you put it up late there. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, uh, how many of you are planning to vote for Vice President Harris in November? I, I want to dive into I exactly why that is. Linda um, and, and then Kathy, why are you supporting Vice President Harris for president? First voted for Reagan in 80 as well. And all of my voting years, I was told character counts. And as I look at Donald Trump, I either have to say character counts and not vote for him or say it doesn't count anymore. I did vote for him in 2016. I voted for Joe Biden in 2020, and I will vote for Kamala Harris this year. That's um, interesting that you, you voted for Trump, then Biden. Now you're going to vote for Harris. These are very different people. What is driving your decision now? I have listened to Kamala Harris and the things she has to say. I truly believe she cares about people. I think her life shows she cares about people and she truly wants to work to make our day in and day out lives better now. And I, I, I care about now, but I have grandchildren and I care about what kind of a world we're going to give them 
to build on as they become people to vote in the next few years. And again, I go back to character counts and Donald Trump is a proven liar. It's like every week there's something new in the news that we are learning about him being dishonest. And I, I cannot vote for him. I, I just cannot do it. He has said and done too many things that I think should be disqualifying from January 6th to those poor people in Springfield, Ohio. They must just be terrified. He says if he is elected, he's going to start deporting people from Springfield. They're here legally contributing to their community. That has to be terrifying for them. And I want to be able to look my grandsons in their eyes and tell them I voted for someone who lives the way I tell them I want them to be people who live with character in their own lives. And if character counts, then I cannot vote for Donald Trump. Uh, Linda gave us the view from Michigan. Kathy, you're in Pennsylvania. Why are you voting for Vice President Harris? <clears throat> I am not a single issue voter. Uh, I look at the broad spectrum of what is going on in our country and not just our country, but my state, my local community. And I hear and see the fears that people have just contemplating another four years with Donald Trump. Um, I don't have anything that I can think of that I would say I agree with him on. Um, and I, like Linda, would say, to me, character counts. I grew up with, you're known by the company you keep. Um, and the company he keeps and aligns himself with do not seem like the people to me that I want contributing to what's going to be happening in the future to my state, to my community, or my country. So uh, Donald Trump is a no for me. And also on the, I, I can't vote for someone that I just look at and don't trust. That's where I'm coming from. What about you, Mauricio? You are uh, joining us from Wisconsin. I did all what the previous two ladies said, uh, 100%. Um, January 6th to me is beyond unacceptable. Uh, that's sacred territory that was stormed. He riled up that it was not a protest. That was an insurrection. The plans were to overthrow a legitimate election. That will never be tolerated in in my viewpoint as it's been excuses by everybody that supports him. Uh, well, you know, it was a protest. No, it wasn't a protest. That was planned. The day before he texted, be there, it's going to be big. In front of that crowd, he said, I'm marching with you there. He inspired this to happen. Beyond that, his morality. Have you ever met anybody that said, I want my child to grow up to be like Donald Trump? No, that's not going to happen. Well, uh, Mauricio, that's interesting. You put January 6th, and I, I guess you would say the state of our democracy um, at risk here. But I, I wonder, do you believe that Vice President Harris, if she is elected president, that she will be very different from Joe Biden? Or do you see her continuing the issues and uh, agenda that he has pursued for the past four years? I'm sure she's probably a little bit more liberal, um, but she would accept the results if she lost. Um, and that's big to me. Um, I'm a, a centrist moderate. Uh, I wanna get back to the days of Bill Clinton and surplus budgets. We have a $36 trillion debt Nobody talks about it either side. Both parties are responsible for it, and they blame each other when they're not in power. Um, and when they get in power, they spend uh, just like the previous. I mean, Donald Trump ran up more debt in four years than any president in the history of this country. Biden is also running up a massive debt, as Obama and Bush did. And I'm sure that's going to continue under uh, Harris as well. But there's no way that I could look at myself in the mirror if I voted for Donald Trump. You know, it, it's interesting. Um, Mike, I want to come to you here. 
because Mauricio just laid out something that you used to hear a lot about from Republicans. That was this issue of fiscal conservatism, of the debt load uh, on this country from spending. Um, and Congress will have a say in that. But when you look at the projections for the two agendas, Donald Trump and his policies look like they will add more um, to the debt than Vice President Harris's proposals to date. Does that give you any pause? It, as you said, you're, you're a CPA, you're an accountant, you know numbers. You know, I, I am not a fan of layering more debt. I think, um, you know, I, I think there's ways to get there without layering on that kind of debt. Um, I think one of the things that I really appreciated Donald Trump doing in his first administration is, is, is really started to look at government and cut things that needed to be cut. And, um, and I think I, I give him a lot of credit for that and he took a lot of heat for it. So I, but I look at his policy and, you know, I was, I was interviewed, but interviewed by Reuters last week and, and they were like, well, you know, there's a lot of things that they're, aligned on, you know, increasing the debt. I said, well, you know, I don't know if that's pandering for votes or what, but, you know, I don't think it's overall good. I think, and you look at what's, what's happening now with a lot of this debt, virtually zero interest debt coming due. And so if you look at how that feels as a country, and I would tell my clients the same thing is, you know, you're, you're layering all this debt, but you, this, you know, pretty much zero interest rate debt is being replaced with 5% debt on the trillions of dollars and we haven't felt that yet we haven't felt the sting of having to make those interest payments yet because we're just retiring this zero debt but it's it's coming and so the only way to do anything about that is you have to throttle back inflation and get that get the interest rate back and 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 also the thing that creates debt is spending which creates inflation so but yeah everybody wants to have their hand out when you know when they're getting all the goodies that saw it in spades in covid everybody wanted to get you know their bite at the apple so that they you know got their you know benefit but you know but we had and that's what caused the inflation there was so much money in the system mm -hmm. right and that's what what drove up that debt is you know the stimulus that went out through covid that ended up creating inflation but we haven't done the hard work to roll it back and that's what i mean is with with biden's policy of keeping his hands off the steering wheel of the economy and it, it you really had you know and i remember obama did this um you know he did a lot of things to temper inflation and temper the economy so that we didn't have this runaway inflation. And so was I happy about it at the time? Not necessarily, right? Because, oh, you know, I gosh, I wish we had more more capital, but I saw that that was good for the country. So that way, it's, you know, because if you want to really um, depress things, you know, lose your purchasing power through inflation, lose your, your buying power through paying more in interest, um, and it the whole system really starts to get strained. So so that's mm -hmm. where I wish anybody would talk about it. I, I agree with Mauricio. I think it's one of those things that, that nobody's really talking about that, that we all are, you know, kind of keeps us up at night. Cause uh, yeah. to Lydia's Linda's point, I don't wanna I don't wanna layer my grandkids or my kids with that debt. Mm -hmm. Linda Back to the original question I asked Mauricio um, as well. As a Harris supporter, do you believe that the vice president would continue Joe Biden's policies, or do you think she has a different vision for the country? I think she will do some of the things President Biden has done. And some of the things Biden has done has helped our country quite a bit. Um, there, employment unemployment has gone down the interest rates are coming back down and he kept us from being like most of the other g7 countries as they came out of covid where our economy is doing better than theirs are and so those are good things um i think she has some of her own ideas of how to do things i like i like that she wants to reinstate the um, child tax credit, increasing that like it was at the end of COVID. Mm -hmm. I think child poverty went down when that was there. And I think that was a good thing. Um, I like her ideas for helping people to get their own home. Homes are so expensive. And so I'm, I'm happy to hear she wants to do that. Um, 
I would like to hear more specifics of what she plans to do, but mm -hmm. I would much rather see someone want to give tax breaks to the middle class than the most wealthy people in our country, which is what Trump wants to do. And I, I do think a um, tariff would be devastating to our economy, everything. I mean, we get so many things from other countries, from coffee and bananas to glasses. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it would impact so many areas of our everyday lives. And if our dollars don't go as far now, just wait until there's a huge tariff on them. Mm -hmm. So I think she will have ideas which will continue some of the policies of Biden, which have been successful. And I think she will have changes in things where she thinks maybe we can do better. Kathy, what what about you? Does the, the vice president represent change to you or will she continue Joe Biden's vision? I'd have to agree with Linda as far as I believe she will continue some of the positive things that have happened during the Biden administration. But I also believe she has some different views of uh, how things could be for America and the American people. And I would look forward to seeing who she ends up putting around her in her cabinet to help her know more about those things and accomplish those things to move us forward. Because that's what I would like to see is us moving forward and upward, not stagnant, not going backward. Margaret, would it be okay if I just, just weighed in a little bit on, on what Linda said about tariffs versus taxes? Just, sure. just for I a think, second. I think Cole sure. also was trying to get, get in there. Cole, sure. do you want to go first? I uh, know he can go first and then I'll follow up. Okay, sure. Well, and, and that's where I, you know, again, I've, I've been doing the CPA thing for 30 years. Um, George Bush III said, we got to cut corporate taxes. Obama said, we got to cut corporate taxes. Trump cut corporate taxes so that we're kind of re um, competitive again in the world landscape. A corporate tax is exactly the same as a tariff. Right. Anything that we're charging corporations who transact most of the business in our country, if we layer on that tax, they have to push that through to the consumer. They have to have margin. They have they have to have space to be profitable. It's just how it works. Every sitting president in my adult life has said the same thing. So they rolled that back to 21 percent. I thought this is actually genius. And then the other genius of that was they and they got no press. They taxed all of the foreign profits. So Microsoft, Apple, all these big companies, they had to now pay tax on all this money they've parked off offshore for all these decades, right? So that was a windfall for the treasury. I, and I thought that's smart, right? So you're like, okay, we're giving, giving you a little bit of love here, but no more games with this offshore stuff. They got completely a pass for taxes. And so when I see them saying, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna juice taxes you know, back into the 30% range again, believe you me, Every one of us on this call is going to be paying our share of that tax when that gets pushed out to these corporations. It, there, there is no pass. Cole, was that your comment as well, or did you have a different idea? No, I, um, I just wanted to follow up on this idea of how a uh, president, a future President Harris, might or may not be different than President Biden. Mm -hmm. And Kamala Harris went on the View this week, and they asked her a question. They said, what would you have done differently than President Biden? And I'll be honest with you, I do not envy uh, Kamala Harris because she has to defend President Biden. And she also has to kind of thread the needle of following his policies, maybe making some of her own. But listen, um, there have been some failures in this administration. And I think whether you're on the left or the right, you can hopefully see that. Um, and for me, some of those those things off the top of my head were we did not have a good withdrawal from Afghanistan. Um, prices are through the roof, roof for consumers, and we can debate how we got at that. But at the end of the day, inflation is out of control. And there have been a record number of illegal border crossings under the Biden administration. And so I understand that she has to appeal to the base and she doesn't want to alienate any Biden voters. But it's very shocking to me that there is not one thing that she could think of that she would have done differently than President Biden, because even if I was, you know, Trump's running mate, I would, you know, and I had to run after him, I would say, you know, here's one or two things that maybe I would have done differently. And if, if she can't admit that, then she's either blinded or she is unwilling to admit the truth. 
that's just my opinion. <laughs> Cole, just to follow up on that. So when you hear um, Senator J.D. Vance reverse his positions now to align them with Trump, do you judge him the same way? Well, I mean, I think he he said that even on the debate stage when, you know, y'all were there, um, he said that he doesn't align with Trump on on everything. Um, that's something that he's been very forthright about. Um, and even now, I, I don't know that he is 100 um, percent sharing the same vision as Donald Trump. Obviously, they're running mates. Um, I, I do understand that, you know, he has flip flop and that's something I can acknowledge and admit and say that I, I don't know how I feel about that. But mm -hmm. again, Kamala Harris is having to say not one thing she would have done differently. And I, I just I, I cannot I cannot believe she would have said that just from a PR perspective. If I was running her campaign, mm -hmm. I would be I, I would be shocked and horrified. <laughs> um, show of hands. Uh who considers, uh, Cole, you've been clear on this point already, but show of hands, who is concerned about uh, the issue of abortion and reproductive health care going into this election? Okay. Mary, you're not raising your hand. You you live in a, in a state where uh, abortion access is currently um, permitted up to, to 15 weeks. Uh, you're good with that where it is. It's not a motivating factor for you, even though abortion will be on the ballot in Arizona. It's up to 17 weeks. And no, the way I feel is that I'm more concerned about women's health. And I think that we need to concentrate on prevention, prevention of unplanned pregnancies, not using abortion as birth control. That's the way I feel. I'm a mother and a grandmother, and I think that that's what it should be. I think 17 weeks is a good amount of time. In 10 Why? days, in 10 days, the birth control, I'm 66 years old. So I've, I've seen the backdoor abortions and the botched abortions and things like that that happened in the old days. But now we have a ton of different birth control methods compared to the what we had 50 years ago. Also, our birth control um, tests are so much better. In 10 days, you can find out if you're pregnant. 10 to 21 days, you can find out whether or not you're pregnant. And so I just, I just think that we should not use abortion as a means of birth control. Now, of course, just like everyone else that said, rape, incest, um, you know, problems with the pregnancy, things like that. Of course, I can understand having an abortion and you find out later in your pregnancy that something's wrong with the baby. Okay, you know, that's a different story. But as far as just using it for birth control, I don't, I don't believe in that. I think 17 weeks is, is a good amount of time to figure out whether or not you want to carry that baby to term or not for that period of time. Would you, Mary, like to hear candidate Donald Trump and candidate J.D. Vance echo your beliefs? They avoid talking about the specifics. You were very specific at 17 weeks. Cole was very specific at 20 weeks. Would you like the candidates to be that specific? Well, the, the, spe the specifics is Arizona law. And that's mm -hmm. what you asked me was Arizona yes. law. And 17 weeks is Arizona law. And so I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, it, it is what it is, and that's 17 weeks. So, um, if but it, and, it doesn't yes. matter to you that the um, at the federal level, the candidates don't necessarily agree with you. I, at the federal level, and the reason why it was brought back to the to the states is that different states have different feelings. California is much more liberal than Arizona or Texas or Oklahoma or Georgia or other areas of the country. Um, and just like uh, Trump said, look at Kansas. Kansas has become more liberal than than they used to be. Mm -hmm. And that's very true. But I, the main focus is women's health. Women and, and what's taught in schools, nothing anymore. I mean, they're not the, I think we need to focus on prevention, and I think they need to 
women need to be given the opportunity to know what's offered to them. And it bothers me to think that women are not given that opportunity. They're not given, you know, the opportunities to take care of themselves and take care of their, their health. And, you know, I, I just think that we're, we're missing something here. We're missing a big part of this, which is women's health. And I, I think the other part that we're missing is the mental health piece that mm -hmm. I have taken care of women that had to have abortions and their mental health is, is terrible. I've seen them wake up crying and, yeah. and, and to have to make that decision is terrible. And so there I think we need to take that into consideration as well and take care of the whole patient not just say okay you can have an abortion yeah. up to whatever weeks you know um i i, well, I know mike you want to weigh in too but just to follow up with you mary um you're saying 17 weeks that the arizona government website says 15 weeks of pregnancy abortion is permitted up to that point um why do you think 17 weeks well, 15, 17, I mean, the thing about it is, is that I think they have to make a cutoff somewhere. They have to make a cutoff somewhere. And mm -hmm. 15 to 17 weeks is, is, a, is a cutoff period I can live with. You know, I think when you get past a 17 weeks, then you're getting to the point where the fetus is vi viable. And, you know, babies can be born between 20 and 24 weeks mm -hmm. and live. So I think that people need to make a decision before they are, they're getting to the point where the baby's viable and, yeah. and you know, you're, you're getting to a point of that it, it's just, you know, out of. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know. I want to get to Mike on this too, um, and and I see you raising your hands uh, uh, as well there, Kathy. But um, the reason I'm asking you about the issue being on the ballot is because it literally will be in the state of Arizona, in the state of Nevada as well. That this coinciding with the presidential election. Um, so, Mike, for you, um, does it bother you, or are you happy that the Republican candidate has not? stated a clear position on what for some people is a moral issue and is instead saying it should go to either popular vote right. or let the legislature decide. Well, I, as much as I dislike the whole concept of abortion, um, I also believe everybody has their right to decide what they're good with. And I don't want to tell people what's right for them. And I don't want my federal government telling me what's right for me. I get to choose. I get to make that decision. And I think as as that and I believe what Trump's position is, is we're going to push that out. It is already pushed out to the states. The states can vote their conscience. And I'm OK with that. I I may not agree with it, but I think it's good. And it is interesting because I, I you know, I, I live in Nevada right next to California. We call it the Cal Californication of the state of Nevada. And 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 their you know their their people are fleeing California because of a lot of the stuff they do, and they end up here in Nevada. And we try and accept them, but we just say the reason you came here is you you left something. So please don't ruin it for everybody. So and and the same is true for abortion. So you know, but what's happening now? We have a, a bill on the ballot that is you know, talking about, you know, not being able to limit access to abortion. I disagree with that. I know how I'm going to vote on it. But I believe just as a matter of principle that Texas, which is very conservative, you know, um, uh, Elon Musk, he, he had a choice of putting his headquarters in Nevada or Texas. And he chose Texas because of all the great things that they're doing in Texas, and we're too liberal. We're we're too liberal on how we look at labor relations. We're too you know a lot of things, and so they made a decision to go to Texas. Well, guess what? Now all those thousands and thousands of people get. To, you know, you know, they get the Texas abortion law, so mm -hmm. and how they look at it, and I think that's going to come into the entire gambit of when people decide where they move their company, where they move their family, and where they align with. And I think that's good. I think it just allows people to make informed decisions so they can vote their conscience. And if people would rather be more conservative, they can move to more conservative places. People are, you know, you know, more liberal 
God bless them. I, I respect mm-hmm. their ability to make those decisions. But I don't want the federal, you know, that's just, you know, my, you know when, when they asked me, like, how I self identified, you know, as a Republican or Democrat, I, I'm a yeah. conservative I go, because I want less government. I don't want government. I don't want government in my business. And I definitely mm-hmm. don't want government in my body. Uh, Kathy, uh, you raise your hand that this is an issue that's important to you. It is. I have daughters and granddaughters, and I would hope that the decision of something that serious would be allowed to be made by them and their health care provider, not by someone sitting in a, on a bench or in a boardroom or wherever, making that decision for them to be able to or not to be able to control their own body. And of course, we should be presenting the alternatives and the uh, pregnancy planning, et cetera. But that's just not the case and it's not realistic. And it's not realistic to believe if you like this liberal law better, you everyone can just move where they want to. Those things just aren't realistic. Um, if you could raise your hand in answer to this question, um, how many people are concerned about um, the security of the upcoming election. Are you confident that your vote will be counted and that it will be free and fair and secure? Raise your hand if you are concerned. Are we concerned that our vote will be counted or are we concerned about the election integrity? I'm confused. Well, that's arguably the same, the same thing. Are you, I'll put it a different way. Who is confident that their vote will be counted and the election will be secure in 2024? Who is confident? Confident it will be counted, yes. Yes. So only about- Those are conflicting questions. There's, there's a difference between whether, well, there's a difference between whether I'm confident my vote will be counted or whether our drop box will be full of uh, 20 names or, or people that aren't supposed to be voting. There's a big difference. Well, why do you, why do you think why do you think that your vote would be valid but you would question the validity of others? Well, it's like I said, a drop box. Uh, Arizona, two hundred eighteen thousand people just showed up miraculously, or, or were uh, I, I don't know what the specifics what they were uh, duplicates or everything. First, it they said it was twenty some thousand, then two hundred twelve or two hundred eighteen thousand. Bingo. Where do they in- come from? You live in North Carolina. Are you confident that the state which administers the election will do so f- f- securely? I think we have voter ID last time I checked. So with that, yes. How, uh, sorry, Mauricio. I've was, got to say hand. something. Um, this is something, there's, in, there's an election integrity in this country. Uh, every time that Trump went to court to claim voter fraud, it was 60 sometimes often in front of Republican judges, even judges that were appointed by him, there was zero fraud proven. There are small little bits of fraud in the system, but it's nothing consequential that would change the result of an election. On all of those ballots that there were Republicans that won on, that Trump was on and claimed voter fraud, and that those Republicans actually won, not one of them is questioning intentional integrity on that ballot. It's a conspiracy theory. That's all it is. It's part of Trump's plot. It's part of Trump's style on how he runs to try and convince people and scare people about things that don't exist. And another example would be this thing he did with FEMA where, oh, the conspiracies he started with that. That's what that's what he does. I'll I'll leave it at that. 62 legal cases, Mauricio. 62. Okay. I knew it was 60 something, mm-hmm. but there was then zero fraud, in. zero fraud. If you feel that way, put voter ID in. You have to buy it. You have to put an ID to get a job. Prove that there's fraud. You got, you talk about well, state, there states' rights. Each state runs the election the way they want to, because they have state rights. That's, that's your big thing, state rights. So each state runs their election in the manner that they see fit. So, But I have no problem with a a voter ID. That's fine. If that's the way that state wants to do it, that's fine. But to sit there and and claim conspiracy theories to insult the uh, integrity of elections 
and scare people to think that their their vote didn't actually count when it did. I mean, that's what we've come to in this country. It's ridiculous. Mike. So, and that's where in my state, Nevada, I don't, I know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but there, <laughs> there were, I think, legitimate questions that were raised in my state. And I don't believe we've addressed them. That's my concern. I think they're all addressable. And I think to ensure the integrity and that that's just prudent that, okay, let's just go through the rigor of find out where could, where could there be these problems, Mauricio, in the system, in our respective state systems and, and shore them up so that, so that we feel good about it. I think, I think that's just prudent. You know, so, okay, we questioned it. We looked at, and I, Nevada didn't look at it. That's what my concern is. You're frustrated with your governor. It sounds right. like Cole. My old, my old government, not the new one. <laughs> Well, cool. I, I, uh, I voted for uh, Donald Trump in 2020. Um, I, I do think the election was conducted mostly fairly, and I do believe that Joe Biden legitimately won. Um, but um, like he was just saying, I think that there are some issues with voter confidence. Um, and I do think that comes uh, from both sides of, of the political aisle. And um, some of the problems that we've experienced, um, I think Donald Trump's rhetoric has certainly inflamed those fears in a lot of people. But mm -hmm. listen, um, it, there should have been no reason that it took weeks to certify election results in Nevada and in Arizona. You know, in Arizona's uh, previous gubernatorial election, um, I don't know if I said that word right, um, but they um, it, it took them three weeks to certify that election in Pennsylvania, <laughs> the state legislature had a very clear deadline. They had a state law that said all of the votes must be counted by this date. Mm -hmm. All of the um, absentee ballots must be counted by the state. And their Democratic controlled uh, state Supreme Court said, no, because of the pandemic, we are going to, after the fact, extend the deadline. And so to me, while I do believe that Joe Biden did come out on top fair and square, I think those are things that really um, make me less confident in the results of our election. If a state as massive as Florida can have their election results certified in 24 hours, why are all of these other states taking weeks to do the same thing? And that's my concern. And that's something that I think, you know, there may not yeah. be fraud, but there are cracks in the system that we have to address. Uh, raise your hand if you are concerned about violence in the next few weeks or months. Well, Most of you are not. Kathy, you are. Only Why? because of the um, past history and this being such a sort of, um, what do I say, not contested election, but just such an important and sort of defining moment mm -hmm. in our democracy and election system, I can see that it could happen. I'm not like personally worried. I'm worried for the people that could be close to it and become in, in, in embroiled in some kind of a um, a violent situation. Well, um, the the FBI has warned about concern of uh, anti-government violence and election workers, and let's just hope for the sake of our democracy that um, th that none of that does happen. Kathy, thank you for, for sharing your concerns with us. Thanks to all of you for making the time this evening to, to share with us what's on your plates, what's on your minds, and the what's motivating your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.